What we do is we, we try uh, to understand the brain from molecule to mind. That's our, our strap line, and that's a, a, a big agenda and a difficult agenda. We want to think about, for example, uh, molecules that can be used to restore function, for example, in people who might have brain damage or might have Alzheimer's disease or suffer from uh, epilepsy or some condition like that, all the way through to understanding what goes wrong uh, in uh, a brain that has been damaged in some way, uh, and, and in addition to trying to understand what happens in a brain when it's functioning normally. The Institute of Neuroscience that we have here is, is the only such institute in, in Ireland uh, and it provides a focal point for uh, academic, uh, clinical and industrial research work. Neuroscience really simply means trying to understand the basic biological, physiological, molecular processes that are involved in the brain that mediate behaviour. I'm interested in the interface between perception and memory. The type of memory I'm interested in is um, memory for objects or faces, for example. How do we, re re how do we remember that um, as we encounter a face in the street that it's somebody who's familiar to us or not? And that's a, a, sort of a subtype of um, memory that can actually decline and, um, and can be damaged um, as well, so you can get specific damage to that type of memory. One of the things that's a real problem in dealing with diseases of the nervous system, for example Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, is poor diagnostic tools early in the disease. We're trying to identify very subtle changes in cognitive function that occur in people that don't have a clinical condition. We take the blood samples from these people and analyze both cells and the soluble factors and try to find something that correlates with the poorer performance of these individuals in certain named tasks. And the objective here is to get very, very early changes of uh, cognitive impairment. We've been looking at uh, developing kind of improved brain training techniques. So one of the studies I'm involved with that's funded by the Health Research Board of Ireland um, is developing a, a cognitive training technique to try and improve specifically concentration levels in people with ADHD. And then we use a, a biofeedback based technique to help them to actually improve their, their concentration levels. So they actually, we use a measure of uh, arousal or general alertness, uh, which is achieved by applying electrodes to the fingers and gives us a, a, a kind of measure of this arousal system. And, the participants are then able to regulate that by themselves. There's been quite a bit of work conducted where we've taken sedentary college students, we've pushed them through a very uh, rigorous uh, aerobic exercise regime and we've taken pre-measures uh, of, of memory function, post-measures of memory function and shown that even in a sedentary group uh, of people whose brains should not uh, by definition have suffered that much because they're quite young, we can still get a boost uh, in memory function. And what we find is that uh, there's a factor secreted which we can reliably measure in the blood which occurs in the people who are uh, aerobically fit but is not present in those who are not aerobically fit. We should be encouraging people to walk as much as possible, uh, to cycle where possible, so that that will in turn have a, a really profound impact on uh, health service expenditure in years to come. We've developed a training device that's specifically designed for use by severely impaired stroke survivors. A company has been formed uh, to take that device to, to the next stage. In part is a, a mechanical device that, that provides support for their movements. What happens is the stroke survivor attempts to make a forward reaching movement. We monitor the movement and when they generate a little bit of movement, then the electrical stimulation starts and that assists the rest of the movement. And over the course of that training period, the stroke survivor has to do more and more themselves and they get proportionately less assistance from this uh, electrical stimulation. What's unique about neuroscience in Trinity is that it's a, a multi-level approach. What we, we have focused on is, is an, an attempt on the one hand to do very good uh, fundamental science but apply that science in the context of a discrete number of very important problems. We've forged very, very good connections with uh, industry and uh, we've attracted many industry partners to uh, fundamental research programs. 
we've attracted uh, uh, central exchequer support, but also uh, critically we've attracted really very substantial philanthropic funds and support from uh, the great charitable foundations of the world. What Trinity facilitates is the research infrastructure to allow us to take those next steps and to allow us to make a much more positive impact into global knowledge in neuroscience.